Yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, a uh, very warm welcome to the Litmus Community Monthly Meetup. I hope you are doing well. It's tough times out there, and we just hope that these things just pass by so that we can finally meet up or have a chat, great chat, we can go out. And as we all know, every month on the third Wednesday, we meet up to discuss the release notes, whatever is happening, whatever has happened. So it's been a great uh, time, great month for the Litmus this month. We we had a release, we got in with a lot of new enhancements. But the breakthrough which we had this month was our mascot. So before anything, I would just like to share the mascot which you all might have seen. So here's the mascot which is also known as the Chaos Bird. So can we just, uh, you know, uh, unmute our mics and just have a huge applause for all that we have achieved this month and our chaos world. Um, well, I like, guess that's what it is. That's a new way to applaud virtually. But anyways, today on call, we have a lot of people and I would just like to share the agenda for today, which will, which will uh, include Ramiro. Uh, obviously, as we know that uh, we uh, now have Litmus Chaos on the Octeto Cloud, we can directly deploy Litmus in there and Ramiro has been a great uh, person. He has helped out a lot uh, on making that possible. Next, we have Shantanu from Douche Bank. He'll be talking about chaos engineering use cases and his litmus experience, how he has experienced litmus. Following that, we have Sumit from Intuit who will be talking about the updates on uh, SIG integrations. We just had a call with Sumit and probably he'll be explaining further to the community. Uh, then we'll have Shubham who will be explaining uh, case probes, litmus probes, which is the new enhancement that has been released with the 1.7 release, uh, which will be followed up by Karthik. We'll just have a quick run through of the contributor resources in the SIG charters. And if time permits, obviously we'll discuss a lot about the 1.7 release and we'll also have a lot more on the future of Litmus and what we are gonna try and enhance in the 1.8 release. So over to Ramiro, probably we can start with Ramiro, yeah. Okay, um, I'm gonna share my screen. There we go. I'm just showing that. Can you see my screen? Should be fine. Yes. Sir. Okay. Well, uh, first of all, thanks for, for the invitation, Karthik and Frisbee. It, uh, it's great to, to join your call. I've been having a lot of fun um, learning and, and using um, a Litmus Chaos project. So, hi, everybody else. My name is Ramiro. I'm one of the founders of Octeto. At Octeto, uh, we are a company that builds developer tools for Kubernetes. Uh, our main product is a, it's a, it's a development platform. It's online. You can try it out at octeto.com. That's built to simplify how teams build Kubernetes applications and cloud-native apps. In particular, one of the big things that we're pushing is the idea to build dev environments. And that's where, when I was uh, talking about Litmus, so a really interesting, cool way to integrate both tools as a way to make things easier. So I'm going to show you today. Same things you can try on your own later on. Just go to octeto.com. I'll, I'll share some links and everything is in a repo that I'll, I'll share later. But this is what the platform looks like when you log in. And one of the first things we've built, um, here, oh, live demos. There we go. Okay, I was not working, but I can switch to the other one. Here we go. So that the first thing we have is we have this one uh, catalog where you can deploy things um, directly to, to your cluster, to our cluster. And last week we added uh, Litmus Chaos to it. Uh, the cool thing about this catalog is that you can just click on you know, the, the deploy button and this will deploy and configure everything you need to use uh, Chaos experiments on a cluster. In this case, I'm doing it on a cluster where I install Octero. This can be done on any cluster. You could do it on our SaaS, on octero.com, or on anywhere else. And it's very easy. The developers will go, click here, and deploy. This is using a Litmus Chaos official 1.7 um, chart. And the one thing that we're doing differently, and I thank you for, for your support on this, is that this is the version of the chart that's configured to work on a single namespace. So you click on deploy, 
and this will deploy everything you need on the namespace to, to run your chaos experiment. So you'll see this is going to launch a deployment. This is the operator. It's running on the scope of the namespace, and this gives you everything you need to run your chaos experiment. So once you have this, this is, you've seen this before, you have Lignos running. The second thing that we do now is the idea that for developers, everything should be configured to run with one click. So I have a repo here that I created that has my application on it. And one thing that Octeto does is it lets you create repos where you define this file called Octeto Pipeline to deploy the application for, for developers with one click. One of the big things we're pursuing is to help people who don't know about Kubernetes or don't necessarily care about Kubernetes to be able to still take advantage of all this automation and for them to, to run their, their experiments. So in this case, we go back here, you click on deploy. You can deploy from Git repository. So I'm gonna copy paste the repo. And in this case, I'm gonna use this branch community call that I prepared for this for this one. And you click on deploy. And what this guy is gonna go clone the repo. And while this runs, so I'm gonna show you what this is doing. My VS Code instance here, what this is doing is it's gonna launch an application and the experiment. The application, in this case, I'm using the, the, the same, um, it's, a, it's a Go based um, demo app. You can see it. Very simple, right? It's, it's the, the same, it's a Hello World app. It has a port 8080, has a Linux Pro, a normal thing, has a service in front of them. So when you deploy this, it should be done right now. We have a, an endpoint to it. And we can see it's just Hello World. Right? The other thing that this did automatically, and if we go back to the pipeline, is it created my experiment for me. In this case, I'm using the pod delete experiment that uh, the Linux Cloud team built. And it's going to inherit you know, all the configuration, the accounts, the permissions, all of that. What was really cool, what I like about this scenario is that if you saw from the dev perspective, all you have to do is deploy from this Git repo and everything is already configured to you. So it's an easy way to integrate uh, chaos engineering in your teams without everyone needing to be aware of that this is, is there. So right now I have my application running. I have my experiment pre-created. So at this point, I can just go and actually run the experiment. In this case, I'm gonna go to here. I'm gonna change context. One of the things we do with Octet is there's a CLI that lets you manage all the all the um, all your namespaces and things directly from the from the command line. In this case, you just have to log into to Octet. Activate your namespace. And it's the same as if I was doing QCTL context, it just automates downloading the QCTL file and letting them need to use this specific namespace. And then you'll see that I'm uh, I'm here, I have all the pods, I have my Hello World running there, I have Lidmus running there. So now let's run the experiment. So I go here, I have my engine. In this case is gonna say, it's gonna I'm gonna get pod killer. I'm gonna attack the Hello World application on deployment, right? So I just copy this and run it. Oh, I have it in here. I think there could be an older instance of the. I think so. I think you're right. Okay, do it again. Okay, let's create a new namespace. Um, just look quickly at something again. So one of the things that this allows you to do while this runs is the idea that you're creating this environment that are very repeatable. If you see all this, all this data is coming from repos, it's coming from manifests that anybody in your team can just kind of like launch them and run them. This instance of Octeto, by the way, I didn't mention this, is running, you can install Octeto on any Kubernetes cluster. Just go to our website, you can download the home chart and run it anywhere and you get this really nice uh, UI and that thing. But anyway, it's running again. So 
Let's see if we get luckier this time. Oh, wait, I don't know what's going on now. I think is that at a, a cluster level, uh, Ramiro, any... It looks like it. Create another, ah, oh, wait. Yeah, it's a... Oh, do some live debugging. What's going on here? Haven't seen that error before. Error when creating engine. Create not allowed when custom resource definition is still in If oh. you get the uh, get CRD, you should see something like terminating, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, CRD like custom resource definition. C CRD. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, and then probably you need to check for the uh, litmus. Yeah, let, let me see. I, I don't yeah. think you have the CRD definition set it up because the CRD definition will be set up on a, not on your name specifically on a common, uh, correct me, Karthik. Right? Yeah, it yeah. should be, it should be I, I installed uh, already. So uh, let's, let's try a different uh, cluster just right. to get the same thing going. I thought it said CRD was terminating. That's why I was. CRD. I thought it was maybe a finalizer that is hanging on it. That's what I think happened. That's my best <laughs> answer, so I've, I've been playing with it a lot. So I've been playing with it a lot. So. Hey, Romelio, can you just do the uh, get CRD? Just check that in place of doing this. You can quickly fix that whole thing. Yeah, yeah. anyway. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, this should work. Okay, today something not working with them about. Anyway, I, I want to take more time, but when I show you what, how now you can deploy Litmus, through the, again, to the, to the, 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 the Petal catalog, to it's the there, and especially if you go to Petal Cloud. You can get a free account of, of, of Octel, you can use Kubernetes there, you're gonna get a namespace, you can use the there and run your experiments, kind of like, like I show you today. So I, I'll, I'll try to shoot this on my own and I'll, I'll report back on the Slack group, see what happened there with the, with the CRD that were not running. I guess the demo gods were not with me today, but anyway, thank you, thank you for the time. I hope you find this useful and I'll, I'll share the resources afterwards if you want to try it out yourself. Yeah, uh, thanks, Tamiro. I think, um, uh, this is actually a great integration. I think one of the real use cases uh, is for people who are developing applications, a lot of developers who have assigned their own namespaces can actually put the entire stack there, the operator and the experiment and execute it. And um, this is something that we are also adopting within the Litmus uh, team for development purposes. Octeto is actually helping us to uh, make our inner development loop quicker. I think uh, a lot of the Litmus developers today were building their own images, trying to run a job with the new experiments that they've created, and then eventually create the engine CRs and the experiment CRs. I think we were finding that to be a little bit cumbersome. I think with Octeto CLI, we're able to develop on the cluster. I'll probably also share the resources on the meetings page. We have got some documentation around how we are doing that, um, that probably we could take a look. Uh, I think we'll move to the next agenda item. Um, Shantanu is here. Um, hi, Shantanu. Thanks for uh, joining. Would you like to um, share your thoughts around uh, Litmus, uh, how you've been using it, what problems you might have been having? I think we could uh, take some good feedback. Sure. Uh, hi. So I'm Shantanu. I'm I work as an SRE at Deutsche Bank, and uh, well, I'll just share a small feedback and my journey with Litmus Chaos so far. So uh, I'm new Litmus Chaos from quite a while now, but but uh, Chaos engineering, engineering was a topic which was not probably on high high on our priority list till uh, until now. But uh, recently we were facing some use cases. We were facing that uh, we were seeing that our platform was not getting used optimally, to be honest. And uh, we, and that is basically how uh, everything came on the priority and chaos engineering was higher on the list and 
he and my team, our whole team started exploring different chaos engineering tools. And since I already knew Litmus, I, I kind of recommended that we should probably give Litmus a try. And that is how I started with Litmus. Just to give a short overview of our environment, it is an air gap environment, which is, uh, it is a internal platform, which we call Fabric, which is built on top of OpenShift. And uh, since it is air gap environment, we cannot directly download uh, Docker images from external registries or things like that. So everything has to be built inside the data center and then deploy it. So I have went through that process with Litmus Chaos. And well, honestly, I think uh, the initial imp impression was that it is quite, I mean, it was quite a neat tool with Chaos as well, custom users and things like that. And I quite like that uh, we can expand uh, uh, expand Litmus Chaos with administrative mode and things like that. So so far, uh, I think we are in the very early stages of Litmus Chaos, but uh, we encountered some use cases and some questions when we discussed uh, the result of our initial uh, chaos experiment with Litmus Chaos. It's a simple pod date experiment, nothing fancy, but it was it was what this work discussion so uh, we had quite a few use cases like for example how can we term a chaos engineering experiment a more so sophisticated one as a pass or fail so for example 80 percent of http requests are not being served or maybe 80 percent of requests are being served 20 percent are not uh, how are we supposed to set up threshold how are we set up to uh, how are we I'm going to define hypothesis for saying that, okay, this, this chaos engineering experiment is passed or failed. Instead of simply saying that, okay, I have started a pod delete experiment, my pod is deleted and the experiment succeeded. So I think that is where I have come, uh, come so far with our use cases and practical ex experiments. And I think uh, Litmus is quite interesting tool because we were uh, we were exploring some other tools as well which are not open source as well but since uh, I like open source tools and I've been interested all along in open source stuff so yeah I'm quite satisfied with how Litmus has progressed so far. Great uh, thanks Shantan I think there's a short demo around uh, probes in Litmus I think um, a, a couple of use cases um, or a couple of capabilities around air gapped that we are sort of aiming to sort of build around is um, one is to reduce the number of um, images that would be needed to execute the litmus experiment suite. We don't want to have too many disparate images and having people build all that in their downstream repos. So trying to simplify that and trying to reduce that. Um, I think we've made some progress on that count on 1.7. Uh, and the other one was the introduction of the experiment probes. So the hypothesis is something that's really important. And um, uh, there were a lot of requests uh, flowing in from the community around how we could have some custom conditions uh, be defined in a declarative way. Uh, you know, uh, uh, that was there in Litmus earlier where you could actually create a new experiment with your business logic, the pre and post chaos checks as we call it. Um, for a particular use case, but that would mean uh, creating a new experiment and maintaining a separate uh, CR. I think what we've done now is um, we introduced the concept of probes where in the chaos engine manifest, you can declaratively provide some commands or provide an endpoint which you want to um, you know, uh, check against to see if it is alive, or you can provide some KTS um, AP resource version groups and kind and provide some filters in the field selector, which will help you to identify the availability of those resources as part of your check. So you could do all these things newly. Um, I think, I hope that this will prove to be useful to your use case, uh, Shantanu. I think um, we are not yet documenting that. It's uh, an undocumented feature, so to say. Uh, we just have some basic information there got it pretty late into the cycle in 1.7. Uh, I think uh, in 1.7.1, which should go out um, in about a week or 10 days time, should have all that information. Um, we will have um, a small uh, 
uh, demonstration of that going ahead. Okay. Um, thanks uh, for sharing your thoughts, uh, Shantanu. I think uh, next up is uh, an update on the SIG integrations. Um, some of the um, enhancements that Sumit and team have been making from Intuit around um, the chaos experiments. Sumit, would you like to go? Yeah, sure. Uh, so last uh, community meeting, we talked about uh, two core concepts. One is that uh, uh, Litmus using Chaos Toolkit, uh, interacting with uh, AWS and VJ demonstrated that. Right now, that one is in live. So that means you can still uh, use the Litmus and uh, create the AWS resource, uh, specifically EC2 Terminate. Uh, Right now, I think it's not visible in chat, but documentation and others uh, are uh, open. Um, once that part is uh, merged, anyone will be able to use that. So that's a uh, one major uh, um, change because now with that, we we will have a way you can start interacting many of uh, the experiments. Along with that, there is a small uh, experiment we added which we think is uh, pretty useful, uh, especially in the Kubernetes, where application service or microservice, we wanted to get uh, that to be uh, killed and then make sure that the reconciliation of that specific object happens and the service will restore automatically. So that's another small experiment we added that. Uh, along with that, uh, we have a form of small uh, which will take care of uh, a couple of aspects among that one is that interaction with the these integration like right now we are using one of the integration from a chaos toolkit uh algo workflow all those things we will be planning to have a more frequent update going forward right now we are not exactly sync with the let us go and let us sensible so there is a good effort going right now to make that is a compatible across the board uh, and uh, yeah, that's that's uh, pretty pretty much. Karthi, you want to add anything? Or if I miss anything? I think um, these AWS experiments and the enhanced Argo workflows are really helpful. I think um, they are yet to be reflected on the hub, like Sumit said. I think we've got the code merged in the Litmus Python repo. Um, I think we'll probably soon uh, get it available on the hub. So that's great. Thanks for the update, um, uh, Sumit. Uh, I think next up, uh, we have a short demonstration of the probes. Um, I'll just share the context. Uh, Shubham, um, are you there? Is Shubham on the call? Yes, Karthik. <clears throat> great. Um, all right. Um, probably you could share your screen and uh, we could just uh, open up a chaos engine with the probes in it and I'll uh, just probably take a couple of minutes to explain what they are and um, you could then go ahead with the demo. All right, I think the chaos engine is familiar to all of you. Um, the section called uh, probes under spec is, is what we've added. And there are uh, basically three types of probes that have been introduced in this release. One is the HTTP probe. It's going to query a, a, a HTTP endpoint. You can provide a URL and provide uh, some port. And then uh, you can also provide the expected response code. So this um, is one probe type. It's basically going to check the availability of some kind of a downstream app which might be depending upon the application that actually killing during the experiment. So that's one of the things. There's also another probe type called as command probe. If um, you could scroll down a little bit, uh, Shuma. Uh, so this command probe is uh, when you want to execute some kind of a custom command. Uh, let's say you're running a Cassandra application or you're running something else, uh, some uh, application that's specific to your business use case, and um, you want to execute some commands, essentially a bash command, to verify if things are all right. right? And um, you can specify that here, and you can also provide an expected result uh, for the bash command that you're executing. So this probe is going to be matching that expected result with the command that you've executed and um, qualify the experiment result based on that. The third type is a KTS probe. And um, the KTS probe is the one where, uh, I, 
uh, there were a lot of use cases within litmus where some users were basically wanting to check the availability of certain kubernetes resources so it's um, you could do this with a kubectl command in the command probe as well but this is a more native way of doing it let's say you have some custom resources um, and the litmus uh, pod might not be able to really uh, get details of um, custom resources not known naturally to it so you provide the group version and resource and provide some filters in the field selector so you'll be able to uh, find the availability of those resources that's also one check and um, each of these probes as you can see has a common set of parameters like um, it has a probe timeout it has some interval and a retry so this is basically to ensure that you can retry your probes a few times before you actually just give up and say it's failed. Um, so this is uh, the standard behavior of any probe that you would generally create. So this is the toleration that we sort of built into it. And each of these probes has a mode. You can see the modes there, SOT, there's an edge mode, and there is a EOT mode. So the SOT is basically saying start of test, EOT is saying end of test, and edge is saying both, it's basically both start and end. There's also another mode called continuous, which keeps doing this uh, probe in another part separately parallel to your chaos operation so that you know that during your chaos how your um, checks are behaving whether your applications are alive or whether the resource that you want to behave a certain way is doing that so the continuous mode is not yet built in into 1.7 that will come in the subsequent um, release we have the edge eot and sot today and um, we're still iterating on the design, the schema for these probes and what all it can do. Um, uh, but right now, this is an initiative that we've started to help people define their um, exit and entry criteria declaratively rather than build that into an experiment and maintain a new CR. Yeah, so that's the intro that I wanted to provide. Um, so probably, Shubham, you can do a quick demo. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Karthik, for the details. Karthik, I can. Uh, I have a few follow-up questions. I can wait yeah. after the demo. Sure. Okay. Thanks, Karthik, for the detailed uh, explanation. So I have already provided some values for the uh, demo. So yeah, for the STD, for the <laughs> STD probe, yeah, I have provided this link and the response. The response code can be like two hundred. Okay, positive case. For the CMD Pro, I am for the source as Cassandra, so I am using SQL such as command. And for the for the inline Pro, I am using kubectl command. And for the KTS Pro, I am using GBR values for the pod and field selector for a pod, which is already running our cluster. So as my all uh, all uh, dependent resources already created, so I am creating my engine. is created so run the pod is created waiting for the chaos pod so chaos pod is created we can check the logs of pod so i have defined few probe as sot few probe as sot and few probe as the age so here, I mean, uh, after the probe run, we, we get some probe details, probe instance, probe status, probe name, and all these things, and pass and fail as well as here. Karthik, you are on. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, I was unmute. So, yeah, this is a pod delete experiment um, which Shwam is showing, which has all these probes just for illustrative purposes. Um, so, I think the pre chaos and post chaos events that you are used to seeing on the chaos engine is now actually going to report the status of these probes as well. And um, 
this probe details what the success or the failure of it and thereby the overall status of the experiment. So even if one probe fails, your experiment is, the verdict is going to be failed. Um, but you're still going to get what is called as a probe uh, success percentage pushed to your chaos results here. Yeah, so you can see that the pre-chaos and post-chaos checks have the probe detail also pushed in. Um, we're trying to see what's a good way to push the detail of each probe. Right now, it's like a consolidated view of whether your probes failed or no. Ideally, I think we would like to have it for the individual ones as well when you push it to the chaos events. And um, the chaos result, um, when you take a look at that, you can see um, it's going to have details of the individual probes and um, what's its name, whether it passed or failed. And uh, there's going to be a probe success percentage that's going to come about depending on, it's just a simple ratio of the past probes versus the overall probes. So sometimes you could still have a 75% probe success percentage and have the verdict failed because one of the probes has failed. But this is just to give some additional data point uh, to the users, really, nothing more than that. You could use this uh, in some kind of an observability platform to say how your experiments are behaving, what's been their residency scores over a period of time uh, using this probe success percentage. And there's also a field that probably might come up inside of the chaos result status, uh, which is going to be a field for data. The, when I say data, it's like, each experiment runs in its own uh, use case, has its own context, uh, business context. So you might want to push some information about your um, environment or some result that you gathered during the course of your experiment, maybe some latency parameters, IOPS, something like that that's specific to your use case. And you might want to push that back into the result. So this will also help in generating some kind of a report with the chaos result itself. Um, so that's another enhancement that's sort of coming in. So along with the probe status and percentage, you'll also have a data field. It's basically nothing but you can just push a JSON blob inside it to hold your information um, that you would like to see as part of the result. That would have to still be done from inside the experiment though. The probes can be defined outside. Um, so I think that's a very quick demo. Um, are there any questions or any thoughts around uh, this direction that we are taking around probes? What do you have to say about it? Any thoughts, feedback? I think one of the, um, so Christine, um, I think we had a chat uh, in one of our earlier calls around <clears throat> observability. And um, let me just share my screen for a few seconds. So, uh, one of the things um, that Christopher was alluding to some time uh, back in one of, one of our previous calls and also what um, I think we didn't have it at that stage and probably refine it a little bit after that. So you have these chaos events that you can push um, as Prometheus metrics and you could sort of, sort of overlay the chaos um, events on top of an application dashboard. And they can also talk about some positive and uh, past fail kind of cases. So here is where I think we're trying to also sort of stitch in the probes um, into the observability view, because um, it might be a failure, but you might still want to see how each probe behaved. So sort of try to get that into the dashboard. That's the idea. Yeah, so that's one thing I just wanted to share uh, as an update. Any, any thoughts? Uh, yeah, thank you. So one, uh, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, one, uh, one of the things that I've been, um, uh, using myself is I've been annotating uh, my uh, experiment runs and I've done this by setting Ansible parameters in the engines themselves. So okay. the only issue I had there was because I cannot merge perhaps them so that the, the environment variables for the chaos engines, they are stored uh, in an array. And the way it is done with custom resource definitions, that if I want to add entries to that one, they are simply going to be overwritten, not appended. So I have sort of an ugly workaround hack for the moment. And I wasn't sure if this is something that is even, if this is by design for custom resource definitions and it's not actually possible to merge it, or if it was, it was one of those words. But I really love, and I see that you were using that in demo too, to annotate, to be able to tell exactly in my charts when an experiment has started and the entire duration of it. I absolutely love that part. So this is the only issue that I have had. I'm not even sure if it's an issue. It, it's, uh, it's, it's doing what it's supposed, this is the design. 
Um, if, if anyone has any idea of how you could easily add um, environment variables to the engines, for in this case for Ansible, for example, oh, yeah. uh, in a dynamic way, then, then, then that would be great. I haven't found any good way, then I, I just have a really ugly shell script for that. Oh, all right. So there are some uh, um, environment variables today which are sort of overriding what's there inside the experiment defaults, but they're still runtime. So I, I get your point. If that's something you want to inject dynamically, uh, we should basically have a reconciled operation that just re-triggers the experiment with a new set of variables. Uh, is that a correct description, Christine? For example, I have a set of those are these are exactly these are the environment variables. So what I am doing is that I'm adding Ansible uh, variables to this because Ansible. in the Ansible run, um, Ansible looks for uh, for environment variables. For example, um, I'm telling Ansible where my uh, the address of my Grafana. So mm -hmm. I can show you an example, maybe. Okay. Uh, uh, wait. If I have it set up, I'm just gonna check first. Uh... Hey, Karthik, I have a question. Yeah, yes, Sumit. Yeah, so the pro, what right now you are talking is, uh, is a pretty common phenomenon in uh, chaos uh, world. Uh, so my question is that you just showed for podlit. So is it available for all the experiment or uh, is it uh, like if I just say that like in my experiment, I need to add that. Can I do that or for that something else I need to do? Yeah, we could we could do that uh, for all experiments, uh, Sumit. Um, the the definition is on the engine side. So engine, as you know, is like a, a dynamic thing. It's an instance CR. Um, for each instance of chaos, you create a new chaos engine. So you could do it for any experiment. But the probes that you specify through the engine are today executed by the native litmus um, uh, experiments. Uh, if you would want um, a different lib, a non-native litmus lib uh, runner to implement the same probes, you probably have to make a slight modification to do that. So one of the things I missed talking about in the probes is there are two types of probes. One is, uh, I mean, uh, amongst the categorization of a HTTP command is one kind of categorization. The other one is whether it is source or inline. When you say inline, the litmus go runner itself runs the probe. When you provide an external source, you provide another image. It could be a chaos toolkit image or an alpine image, for example. It can run that as a separate pod. So that, that kind of a probe can be used with other runners as well. So th there is, um, I, I wouldn't deny that there are changes that um, we need not make. There are a few small in, uh, infra changes that would have to go in, but I think it should be feasible. Right now, these are executed by the native litmus experiments. Got it. Uh, can I share my screen just briefly? I don't. Um, sure. Let me see here. Okay. So can you see my uh, yeah. the script I have here? So this is. I don't actually have the chaos expert. I just deleted the cluster. I was cleaning up after myself. So I just have this horrible script. I don't know if you can show exactly what it is that I'm trying to do in here. So pretty much all I'm doing is. Because uh, of the way Grafana is set up uh, in, in my clusters. Uh, sorry sorry? To Can you increase the font size a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Let me see here. Why isn't it? Oh, wait. I was supposed to. Wait, I'll open it in. Do like this. Because I'm deploying this to a multitude of clusters, and many of those clusters they are only alive for maybe a few hours. So, uh, and the Grafana um, access to Grafana via proxy uh, was just messy. So, uh, what I'm doing is actually I just I'm deploying a small container into the cluster to just to get the Grafana API uh, URL, and I have uh, it's in the deployment of Grafana where I'm setting the 
um, uh, setting rest of the stuff that I need. And this is actually uh, here. These are the additional variables that I'm adding to my experiment. And this means mm -hmm. that every time I run uh, a, a, an engine, a litmus engine, it will tell, uh, I will have an annotation showing up in my graph, just in the way you were shown, which is very, very, very nice. But however, the way for me to do this is that I'm actually picking up uh, what is in the experiment before, uh, and I'm just appending, I'm creating a new array with this join B. Um, and then I'm, as you can see here, I'm, I'm using a merge patch, but it, it's actually not merging, it's just overwriting it. Um, so if anybody has any good ideas of a, of a way to do this, because this is really hacky and ugly and I'm not proud of it, but it works. Um, so, um, and, and any thoughts on being able to customize the engines of using flags uh, like this would uh, would be most appreciated if anybody yeah, can think of something. So, uh, because having the annotations, it just it, there's such a huge difference when you can tell exactly in in um, in my charts exactly when uh, when an experiment is running, and that this makes it a lot easier to plot up uh, results. All right, I think that's a good requirement. Uh, so, Christine, would you be open to creating an issue on a litmus with this uh, requirement? I think Absolutely. we could uh, take this discussion there. I think uh, a lot of folks here um, uh, will definitely have something to pitch in and probably find a solution. I think could, uh, we could also prioritize that for the 1.8 um, release. That's uh, great. Thanks, uh, Christine, for sharing that. Um, I think next on our agenda item today is um, a very quick run through of the new user and contributor resources and um, SIG charters. So I think that's a favorite of ours. Um, we don't manage to get there in most calls. We finish early, but um, uh, we'll probably just take a look at that. So um, is my screen visible or am I not sharing my screen? Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, so here is the agenda. So I was talking about this item. So um, I just wanted to um, thank uh, Ramiro. I think Octeto has been really helpful for us to churn out experiments or make changes to existing experiments with Octeto. Um, so this is the blog that we have around how we can use it to actually um, iterate faster with our experiments. So we are basically trying to uh, launch, use Octo in swap mode. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Ramiro. So we've got um, a deployment that has all the things that um, are necessary for running a given experiment. So let me just show you that uh, very quickly. The deployment looks something like this inside my experiment. Um, it basically has a test folder where I've got this deployment, which is having the right RBAC and right environment variables and maybe things I want to pass to it otherwise. And um, I actually doing, uh, I'm doing an Octeto up. I have an Octeto manifest here that is there uh, and uh, has been configured with the base image, which has all the bells and whistles for running Golang, uh, compiling and running the Go binaries. So this, when I do an Octeto up, it swaps my existing deployment, which is running a dummy busybox image with the Golang image. But it also loads up the entire source code that I have for the experiment. And they can always edit it and then run the experiment from inside the development container and uh, see what is happening. That's a huge benefit. So that's one of the um, useful integrations that we've had in the last release. Um, apart from that, there are some uh, new resources that we're adding in terms of and this is for both users as well as developers. Um, some presentations around the architecture, the components, and uh, YouTube video. We just started a tutorial series on YouTube where we are posting uh, information about the, um, you know, uh, uh, the components and how litmus functions, low level, and it's also a good way for us to, you know, look at it and think what we can do better. If, if you can take a look at this and suggest uh, such improvements to the framework, I think that will be great. There is uh, a set of slides and uh, videos where we've talked about this, so you could take a look at that. 
and um, the chaos hub has been improved as you can see the chaos bird is very prominent here like Prithvi was saying i think it's all over the website uh, the chaos bird in different formats so we just restructured the hub a little bit so you might have been used to seeing the top level chart categories and the experiments inside of that so we just wanted to make people choose better sort of the ux to be better in terms of quickly adopting an experiment so we brought this also to the top level so at the moment you're going to hub, you're also going to see the experiments individual experiments that you can go pick um, and we're also trying to add more information around what is the nature of that experiment whether it's an improv or a pod level experiment those differentiators so these are some of the new uh, changes we made there is also a wiki that is a uh, little bit enhanced with the sig groups so we'll come to talking about sig uh, charters so we released or we sort of came up with uh, special interest groups within Litmus for people to focus on the items they are interested in. So Litmus being a platform, a chaos framework, some people are interested in newer experiments, some people are interested in orchestrating existing experiments, some people are interested in the observability aspect, how they can improve the observability for existing experiments and all that. So we created some special interest groups, it's, a, it's an nascent idea, we're just trialing with it, we want people to sort of come together, join these groups, and each of these is associated with uh, you know uh, a dedicated charter each sig has a particular set of goals just like the cnca for kubernetes six it has a couple of leads people who are prominently participating or, or, or driving that aspect of the project and has uh, uh, the github teams where you could have access to the repositories dealing with or that are under the purview of these uh, SIGs. and um, you could take a look at the charters of these six in these um, in the wiki um, integrations is about uh, integrating with other tools other chaos tools now uh, we have uh, other abstractions which run chaos like chaos workflows argo workflows which are launching the engines that's one thing that's uh, around sig integrations um sumit and vijay are leading that sig observability is all about improving the observability i think christine and christopher i think your, your inputs here are invaluable um so it's about trying to recommend stacks not really maintain them so much but recommend stacks that you could use in your environment for logs metrics and alerting and um, all these things um so we are open i think you could nominate yourselves you could help lead that the thing when we say it's a sig lead or a chair i think not really that um, intimidating it's more about um, sharing your thoughts more often trying to participate in a monthly sig meeting that's going to be apart from this meeting the community meeting so that we can have representation inside of a release each monthly release can have representation from individual six in terms of what we can do uh, what we can improve upon uh, octeto also is a great one that comes into sig integrations uh, i think i'm really looking forward to ramiro and his inputs here and um, the SIG deployment is about, is Maria is actually leading this. Uh, she's uh, really taken on the uh, Helm charts and um, the integrations where we, we are listed on Helm hub and the, the JFrog chart center and the operator hub. So trying to maintain these and make the deployments uh, simpler in the Helm charts, the namespaced uh, chart that, uh, that was referred by Ramiro and reusing an existing service account, not having to create CRDs every time, all these, Kind of things in the deployment uh, is really something to think about and spend time on and uh, improve so i think that's one of the six the others are six ci it's about um, a lot of people want to run chaos in the pipelines gitlab remote uh, templates and github um, chaos actions are provided by litmus today you could see them on the actions marketplace on github so this is about how to improve the ci story there are some use cases on spinnaker and jenkins as well so that's something that we're trying to look at driving in 6CI. So if you are running um, Litmus as part of your pipelines, then you might want to sort of join this group and contribute your thoughts. And uh, SIG testing, I think Odit and Shubham are leading this. It's about um, in making sure the experiment and Litmus framework in general uh, is more uh, resilient, uh, trying to add more coverage. So the um, the website is something that uh, we introduced, I think, in the last call. And we're trying to improve it, trying to add more coverage uh, in the individual pipelines, uh, add more scenarios, add more jobs that are verifying the individual experiments uh, itself. So that's something if you're interested in, you could probably join that group. 
And the sick documentation, I think Divya is here today. Thanks for joining Divya. I think she's sort of really leading, has a lot of thoughts on how to improve documentation, having been an active member in the Kubernetes and CNCF SIG um, uh, community. So uh, we're really looking forward to your thoughts. I think that we, just, we did chat a little bit, uh, Divya, I think early in this uh, uh, last month, but we've not really got the time to sort of put things into action. I think 1.8, we'll uh, try to have all these, uh, you know, try and um, thrash out these things. With each uh, SIG, you can see, has an empty cadence here. Um, the meeting notes, the Zoom meetings, um, the recordings, etc. We can sort of put, start putting out and start uh, sort of start um, spinning the wheel up, you know, from 1.8, hopefully, at least in some of these uh, SIGs and then I saw some, um, uh, so we did create some issues uh, in Litmus for membership tracking. I think you can directly raise PRs into the wiki as well. So these uh, membership trackers are there on the Litmus repo. So if you plan to join any of these, uh, please put a comment. I saw that uh, Shantanu has put a comment on the observability. Thanks, uh, Shantanu. I think very soon we'll add you into the, you'll get an invite um, from the Litmus case or, and um, we'll probably get you added into the GitHub team for that and we'll start having our discussions. Yeah, so that's about the SIG charter. Uh, so we're really looking forward to all your support in um, trying to improve Witness as a framework and have more focused efforts in the areas that we just discussed. 1.7, you have the release notes um, um, here. I think the folks was one of the things, the Octo integration was one. We've also made several enhancements to the experiments themselves. You can find that here. Some um, improvements around air gap and working in air gap environments. I think that's really a gap I would see in Litmus today. We are still not completely 100% great for air gap, but we've been making taking note of that and making the right changes into the framework to enable that. We've, we've made some progress in 1.7 and we're improving upon that in 1.8. Uh, some um, improvements to E2A and documentation and some bug fixes within the experiment and the operator framework uh, around some abortion cases, abort experiment cases. So you can take a look at the release notes. I think we are short on time to go through them in detail. And um, on the new things that are coming up in 1.8, um, some more enhancements uh, and support for network chaos and container in Cryo. I think Andreas has created a great blog around chaos, which we recently tweeted about. Um, he's added the experiment for network chaos um, on containerd and cryo. So you can start using it in uh, micro creators, open, open shift, latest versions, and any other platform that you might be having, which is not using Docker on time. So that's um, a really good news. It, it's almost there. We just need some final changes to that to sort of bring it into the hub. And um, some, more, uh, some more enhancements around um, Chaos target identification. Right now we have annotations and labels. Uh, we're also planning to support uh, namespace level annotations and also have um, ways to annotate more than one deployment and have a subset of deployments undergo chaos by um, uh, annotating them. So some more improvements there. Um, some more improvements around the experiment suite. Cassandra, Redis, and IO chaos. There is something coming up called the Litmus portal, which I'm sure you guys must be aware from the previous call or the previous, uh, the one before that. So th there will be an alpha version of a portal that might be available in 1.8. So this is a UI which will help you to generate your um, chaos workflows and chaos engines and run it on your cluster if you're interested in that mode of running. And it is also going to make use of the scope, success percentage and residency scores, et cetera, to give you a better idea of um, how you've been doing. It's not going to replace human operation. We had a very interesting issue where uh, Christopher also has been uh, sharing his views. A humans uh, cannot be replaced. Um, you cannot make the decisions on behalf of uh, you know, the admin who is looking at it. You might have, you cannot qualify an experiment as a pass or fail or a term, a particular thing as a weakness uh, just with the experiment, but you can do more context. Um, that's what we're trying to do with um, the resiliency score and the portal and probably going to give you that information. Uh, some, uh, uh, some inbound interest on running Litmus on um, different um, environments. Um, people want to run it on ARM-based clusters, so trying to push multi-arc Docker images for that. And um, 
probably improve more dash provide more dashboards the one that i just uh, showed uh, a, few, uh, a few minutes back that was for sock shop application trying to create more dashboards for node exporter look at state metrics things like this standard dashboards where you can sort of overlay chaos and see what's happening and um, improved um, documentation and uh, e2e to, to improve the stability these are all things hopefully we can um, get these things done and um, hopefully we can have start we can start having these sig meetings at least uh, i'm targeting uh, at least a, a two or three SIGs if you could start meeting regularly and start putting out an agenda i think that will start the uh, uh, we'll turn it so that's all about it and the contribute to shout out great thanks to ramiro for um, helping us get listed on the octato cloud and also uh, educating us on how to use octato in our environment and uh, thanks to sumit and vijay for the aws experiments that they've pushed they're available um, they will be available on the hub very shortly and um, thanks to crystal and shantanu and a lot of others for giving us the feedback and um, items to work on during this release the improvements to me uh, uh, thanks to all of you and of course to the rest of the my data folks shubham modit um ishan uh, so more all you guys uh, thanks for all your contributions towards this release yeah so i think that's all we have uh, for the agenda i could i could see something on chat oh, that was just me yeah, yeah. but as important as uh, this one but yeah i just wanted to thank uh, ramiro just to uh, really um, encourage us to work with him and making um, Litmus to work within a namespace because of that experience. I think uh, Litmus has got now a feature where uh, you can run it within a namespace in a multi tenant way. So that's a great addition. Um, thank you, Ramiro. Thanks, Ramiro. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Uh, before, before we move on to the conclusion, I would just invite Devia. She was wanting to speak. So she was not able to speak in the last meeting as well. So she, if she could have shared some views. And Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, if there are uh, any other questions. Okay, so thanks everyone. Um, check out the 1.7 release. Um, check out the Octeto uh, deployment. I think um, uh, we have it running, and as well as um, you could create the issues and uh, uh, talk about the requirements there, and we 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 could get back. Um, you can start any conversation on Slack. I think we will try to address that. Um, yeah, we'll we'll post this recording to the YouTube. And in case you want to check back on some of the demos or some of the points that we have discussed. Right. Thanks, everyone. Have a you. great month ahead. Great day. Thanks. Bye. Bye.